Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome here to the Family Research Council. We are pleased that you have uh, decided to join us both here in person and uh, literally we have uh, thousands of folks joining us online across not just the country but literally around the world. Good to see so many familiar faces here, uh, advocates for life, stalwarts in the movement. You know, this is an exciting week here in Washington, D.C. for those that have devoted their lives to the protecting of the unborn and advancing the, the culture of life. We've already seen positive uh, effects of the transference of power this past weekend. And it's our privilege to have so many of you here today with us. Um, and as I mentioned, those watching online, as our esteemed panelists present a global overview of abortion rates in nations around the world what has happened since the First Nation authorized abortion in 1920, major findings, uh, and recommendations for restoring the respect for human life. Now, I think you're going to find some of the information that you see here today is sobering. But before we can create the solution, we've got to clearly define the problem. And so this, I believe, is going to be a major step forward. We now have nearly a century of evidence documenting what happens when governments authorize abortion. We've seen it in this country. We've seen it in other countries. When government decides to fund something, it doesn't get less of it. It gets more of it. And the abortion worldwide report is the first to systematically track reported abortions in 100 nations, territories, and regions from the year of authorization through 2015. And FRC is honored to co-host this event with Global Life Campaign, and I'm proud now to turn it over to Arena Grosu, who is FRC's director of the Center for Human Dignity and uh, one of the expert reviewers of the Abortion Worldwide Report. And uh, Arena does just a fantastic job for us here at the Family Research Council, and we're honored to have her on our team. Arena. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for this very important lecture. What you will hear about today is an unprecedented report tracking the worldwide abortion toll of one billion babies in 100 countries in one century. I wish we didn't have to have a lecture such as this today, but my hope is that we can take this information of our tragic global past and change our future by instituting strong pro-life laws worldwide. I would like to give a special welcome to the ambassadors and diplomats joining us, representing different countries, as well as various pro-life leaders present here today. I would like to call up Father Bouquet, the President of Human Life International, to start us off in prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, as we come together this day, we are gathered because we want to discuss and to reflect upon issues affecting human life and the dignity of life. And today we just ask that your Spirit be with us as we unveil these truths and we come to understand more deeply not only the impact today, but the consequences that will flow forward. Life is threatened around the world. And there are people around the world who disregard life, who treat life as a commodity, who look upon life not with the dignity, the inalienable and inviolable dignity of every human person. And sadly, there are people around the world in political office and positions of authority who disregard their ultimate responsibility, and that is the protection of human life, in favor instead of laws and policies that disregard life and undermine the family. Today, as we gather to reflect, to discuss and to unveil these numbers and stats and figures and reports. We are hopeful, dear Lord, that you will use these wonderful instruments to expose ever more deeply the truths that will bring people into the light. We pray that the opening of ears and eyes will truly happen today, that people will hear what needs to be heard and move from indifference to action. We pray that eyes that have been closed, have been blind, 
will open and see the realities of the destruction of human life and the consequences upon societies around the world. We pray today for every life that has been lost. We pray for those who mourn the loss of these little ones. We pray for families that have been broken because of the violent crime of abortion. We pray for societies whose demographics today are so wounded and their, country, and their society's continuation seems to be so threatened. We pray for them. And we pray today that all that will be exposed may truly be received and welcomed and that we will respond generously and act accordingly. So thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be together. Thank you for all who are with us in this audience and those who are listening online. And we pray, dear Lord, that all that has been done today and all the work that has been done in this research may be used for your greater glory and honor. All this we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Father Bouquet. When Thomas Jacobson first approached me to tell me about this project that he did jointly with Dr. Robert Johnson, I knew it was a massive undertaking, but I didn't fully understand how complex it was until I started looking at the charts, country by country, year by year. The report contains almost 5,000 country years of data. The principal authors who compile the data and information in this report have spent 32 and 14 years respectively putting this together. I would like to now introduce you to our panelists. Chuck Donovan is the president of the Charlotte Lozier Institute. He served as legislative director of the National Rights to Life Committee more than three decades ago, worked as writer for President Reagan, helped to lead the Family Research Council for nearly two decades, and most recently has been the senior research fellow in religious, religion and civil society at the Heritage Foundation. Donovan earned a BA in English at the University of Notre Dame. Dr. Brian Close is the Director of Education and Research at Human Life International. He is a graduate of West Point, a former A-team leader for the Army Special Forces, and holds a PhD in Civil Engineering and Systems Science. Since 1995, he has been HLI's Director of Research and is one of the most accomplished and well-respected intellectuals in the international pro-life movement. Dr. Close is the author of nine books, over 90 scholarly and popular articles, and has traveled to over 50 countries on six continents as a pro-life speaker, educator, and trainer. Thomas Jacobson is the executive director of the Global Life Campaign. From 2001 until 2010, he served as representative to the United Nations for Focus on the Family, meeting with ambassadors, diplomats, and officials from 110 nations and authoring 80 policy briefs. In 2002, he began compiling abortion data on countries. Jacobson earned an MA in public policy from Regent University, a BA in psychology from George Fox College, and a diploma in biblical studies from Lutheran Bible Institute. He lived in Brazil for four years and has traveled to many nations, including meeting with government officials in 18 nations. Without further ado, let's first welcome Chuck Donovan. Well, I have a very difficult task this morning is to kick off a report about 1.018 billion abortions worldwide over the last century. I want to thank Family Research Council, Tony Perkins and Arena for hosting this tremendous gathering on a mammoth work of history, statistics, and hopefully of understanding. I read, uh, looking through the individual data and the way you might an analyze it and try to come to grips with it, and of course you immediately notice that 739 million of these human lives were lost in communist countries. Just four blocks away from where we are is the victim of communism memorial. If you haven't been there, it's worth your trip. It's an emotional place to pass by. There is a statue, a sculpture of the goddess of democracy who was erected in Tiananmen Square by brave Chinese students who in unnumbered 
numbers lost their lives, standing up for democracy and freedom, and I trust probably for life as well. Well, it says on the base of that statue that it's a memorial to the 100 million victims of communist persecution. After this report, there ought to be a multiplier and an amendment somewhere on that site. Having said that, we in the United States and the rest of the free world, as we understand it, do not escape without a great black mark in this report, even more so because we are free. We did a study at Family, Re uh, Family Research Council, probably inspired it, but at the Charlotte Lozier Institute with respect to elective abortions late in pregnancy. There are seven nations worldwide that allow elective abortion after 20 weeks. Now, life begins at conception and is worthy of protection from that point on. But the truth is that we are in the company of North Korea, China, and five other nations. We did it by judicial decree. They did it by other means of decree. So we escape no black marks in this report. We also know that in statistics like those in this report are impossible to grasp, simply impossible. The famous quotation from Stalin when he was commissar of munitions and he was uh, discussing with the commissar responsible for Ukraine where a deliberate famine had killed millions and he was reciting the statistics to Stalin and Stalin replied, well, if only one man dies of hunger, that is a tragedy. If millions die, that's only statistics. How do we get around the fact that we are dealing with what for many will seem like only statistics? Well, it's very hard to put it in any frame of reference that penetrates our minds and hearts, but it would be the equivalent of one in six people, one in six people in our world today who are not here, who are lacunae in our friendships and in our loves, our families, in our territories, in our homes. So how do we look at it? Well, it would be one more person who should be here on this panel speaking today. If you're in the metro system, it would be that last car that doesn't come in, or the empty car. Or maybe, for those of us who wait on metro delays, it would be for the driver who didn't report to work, creating the delay. If you're a fantasy football leaguer, the top 30 rushers you might choose from, well, five of them are not there, because those five people were obliterated in the United States in the womb in recent years. If you worked at the patent office, it would be 65,000 patents not granted in 2015. What might those patents have done to improve our lives? It would be the millions worldwide who cannot find typically a spouse, almost always a wife, because of the incredible policies of destroying unborn women. It would be nine missing members of our current astronaut corps who will not be finding new worlds for us and new ways of living in the one we have. This is just one way, and I'm sure many others will come up with a way to cope with statistics that overwhelm the human mind and heart. But we cannot be overwhelmed. Certainly Thomas Jacobson here today and William Johnston, a person I've longed to meet for many years after using his Johnston archives. Uh, incredible labor, 5,000 data years. Uh, it scares me to think about it. And here we are in a public place today where you get an hour or so to explain it but I know how much labor there was. It's kind of like a medieval manuscript translator, all of that for one book. This is where we are, all of this for one report, but it's a report the world needs to hear, to heed, to take to heart, to make sure that our memorials to the lost are complete and tell the full story, and that we use these efforts to fill out, and that we don't have the empty chairs at empty tables that have become the modern world. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great honor to be here. My third uh, visit to the FRC building. I'm always very, very impressed by the professionalism, by the beauty of the building itself. This is an organization that's going places. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Thomas Jacobson and William Johnston, Dr. William Johnston, for all of the work they've done. We've already used it a lot. Even this AWR report is always already being put to work for Human Life International. So it's not just an exercise in statistics. 
It's a massive undertaking, and my role was primarily just not very imaginative, but to go over the information to make sure the, stat the statistical methods were properly executed and so on. And uh, I was very much impressed by the professionalism of this entire report, how it hung together, and how simply it was explained so that virtually anybody could understand it. Now, Father Shannon Bouquet and I, the president of Human Life International, I'm the director of research. We just returned from Kenya and the Paris March for Life. We've been to close to 100 different countries, if you count between us, and uh, we can see the tremendous amount of use of this AWR report is going to be put to. Uh, I can give you three examples right away. The first is, especially in Africa and parts of Asia, that if someone from the developed countries comes in and starts talking about virtually any topic, they're considered to be an expert. And one of the strangest lies we've ever run into over and over again is that if you legalize abortion, you'll have less abortion, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But these people believe us, and they, they, uh, these legislators, especially in Africa, want to care for their people, and so many times, not only under bribery and corruption, but also under this uh, uh, false uh, idea that we want to get rid of more abortions, they go ahead and legalize it. This will put a great big, foot-long, rusty steel spike right through that lie of the population controllers right now, this AWR, AWR report. Another very useful use of the report is a little bit of extrapolation. I like to go through, look at the current population of a country, how many abortions have been committed, and then look at the percentage that has been lost, just like uh, Dr. Donovan just talked about. For some examples here, Armenia and Cuba have lost a third of their empire, entire populations to abortion. Belarus, Kazakhstan, Latvia, Romania, and Ukraine have lost half of their populations or more. And the Russian Federation, 61%, almost two-thirds of the entire country, has been lost to the maw of the ever-grinding abortion clinics out there. This is very shocking to the politicians. And if Father Bouquet and I tell them, if you accept this culture of death into your hearts, it will destroy not only the demography of your country, but also the will to live. And we see this in Eastern Europe, all over the place. And in uh, the Russian Federation, where now the uh, will to live has died off to the point where the life expectancy of a Russian baby born now is less than that in most African countries. So abortion poisons the heart and the soul of a nation. Most directly of all, the Abortion Worldwide Report will give evidence that population controllers grossly exaggerate the number of abortions in a country, either illegal or legal, because the money is not really in abortion. The money is in contraceptives and abortifacients. As uh, Bill Gates in the 2012 a London Family uh, Planning Summit talked about, every time you get uh, one of these 120, women, 120 million African and Asian women onto these abortifacients, these chemical methods of birth control, it makes the pharmaceutical corporations $500 every year for each woman that gets hooked on this stuff. So we're talking about $60 billion a year. This dwarfs the amount of money that's made over abortion. So what we have to do is to be able to convince these countries using this weapon here, this abortion worldwide report, to give them true and solid numbers on the number of abortions that are happening. I don't want to make uh, anyone here angry, especially the folks who have worked for so long, but I'm hoping I can convince the leaders of this project here to perhaps now start to delve in to the number of illegal abortions which are being done in each country, because this is used as probably the primary uh, emotional appeal. So many women are dying of illegal abortions, so we have to legalize it. So hopefully we can eventually start to get into that because that will be another outstanding uh, project. Once again, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Jacobson and Dr. Johnston for an outstanding job and know that it has a lot of practical use. We're already starting to use the statistics you've come up with. And I'm very grateful myself to have that stuff available at hand. Thank you. my honor to be here, and I'm so grateful you're here, too. So, Excellencies, distinguished diplomats, and guests, pro-life leaders, 
family, friends, and media representatives, thank you for coming to this historic briefing. Dr. William Robert Johnson and I are the authors of the Abortion Worldwide Report, which is the culmination of 33 years of work for him and 15 years of mine. He is not able to be here today, but we jointly prepared what I now present to you. First, we thank Family Research Council for hosting this event, and I also thank Human Life International and National Right to Life Committee and Regent University <laughs> uh, for um, co-sponsoring this report. Also, I want to express my deepest gratitude to the leaders and staff of these organizations and to Dr. Pat Fagan, who's also here, for their assistance, and to Tony, Arena, Chuck, and Brian for your participation, and to Father Bouquet for that excellent prayer, and to our Lord Jesus Christ 